Welcome back everyone, this will be my new House of the Dragon trailer video, there's a bunch of Game of Thrones easter eggs, I'll explain what's going on. Episode 1 is going to be dropping this week. That's right, we're going back to Westeros, I'll be doing videos for all the episodes just like I did for the main series. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all those. I'll also do special giveaways in those videos too. We'll start with HBO Max subscriptions, all you have to do to enter is just be a subscriber and post all your predictions for what they do in the series. This new trailer is mostly meant to hype you up and kind of give you a once over on some of the really big characters. Now, obviously there's a lot of characters like there was in the original Game of Thrones series. House of the Dragon is no different in that fact, but there are like a couple really, really big characters. Like the most important characters are Rhaenyra Targaryen, Daemon Targaryen played by Matt Smith, Alison Hightower, and Rhaenyra's father, who's the current reigning king when the show begins, Viserys I Targaryen. There is like a brief flashback at the beginning of episode 1 to the Great Council of 101 AC with Jaehaerys Targaryen to explain how circumstances got to where they are at the beginning of actual episode 1. The present day of the show begins about 187 years before the events on the main show Game of Thrones. There are a couple references to Daenerys Targaryen, things on the main show, White Walkers, The Night King, Jon Snow, The Long Night, just to help you place yourself in the timeline so that you know what's happening at this point when the show begins. There isn't too much hand-holding. I thought they did a pretty good job with the way they included some of those explainers to just kind of help people catch up if they weren't big fans of the books or they didn't watch the main series. Like, you can watch this without having watched the original Game of Thrones series. But just starting talking about Viserys Targaryen. So a lot of people remember Daenerys' brother, Viserys Targaryen, in the main show. He's Viserys III. He was named for Viserys I, the character that Patty Considine is playing. Based on the events the show is covering, the Dance of the Dragons, the Targaryen Civil War, this part of the timeline, his personality and the way that they use the character, he's kind of like a Robert Baratheon and Ned Stark mixed into one. He's an older king at the end of his reign, setting off the battle over the Iron Throne, like the War of the Five Kings, even though this is a war within the Targaryen family for the Battle of Succession. So he is eventually destined to die, like you know he's going to die at some point, because he has to in order for the Dance of the Dragons to begin officially. It's more a question of when that's going to happen. So I wouldn't say it's quite as big of a knee-jerk as Ned Stark's death during Game of Thrones Season 1. Like, that was a big WTF moment because everybody had been following his character, thinking that he was, like, one of the main characters the entire season. Like, people who didn't read the books were like, oh, this show is clearly going to be about this Sean Bean character. We're going to be following him for, like, another five, six years. Nope, not so much. So in that way, Viserys Targaryen is kind of a similar figure like that. As a king, he's a little bit more like Ned Stark in that he's very honorable to a fault in his desire to keep things status quo, like Ned Stark wanting to keep things secret. Jon Snow was secretly born to Rhaegar Targaryen and Lyanna Stark, who had been married after Rhaegar had annulled his previous marriage, thus making Jon Snow, true name Aegon VI Targaryen, true heir to the Iron Throne. But like Cersei and Littlefinger both separately warned Ned Stark to his face, his ways would eventually lead to his downfall. Like, Ned Stark was trying to be old school, do things by the book, keep things under hat status quo, but that's not the way the Game of Thrones was played in King's Landing. And it is no different during events on this show. You kind of get that from Viserys in all the trailer footage where he's talking to Rhaenyra saying the Iron Throne is the most dangerous place to be in the realm because everybody wants to kill you and everybody wants to sit on it themselves. So Viserys Targaryen is viewed as kind of a weak king compared to his peers in the Targaryen family because he refuses to choose an official heir for so long, he doesn't want to make the hard choices. His predecessor, King Jaehaerys the Wise, gets most of the credit for all the prosperity that Westeros has experienced the last 50 years or so because he became king when he was like 14 years old and it was this great period of prosperity in the realm for like the next 50 years. This time of great expansion, like the Targaryens became more and more influential, more and more powerful, their dragons grew bigger and greater in number. So as Paddy Constantine talks about his character, one of the things they don't include though is that he's actually very intelligent, he's a big fan of history, like he has a lot of history books. In the series, he's literally making a giant model of the Valyrian freehold inside his bedchambers. That's how much of a history nerd he is. But like Robert Baratheon probably should not have been king, like he was a great warrior, but a bad king, it's the same thing with Viserys. Great student, very learned, but not a great king. He loves his daughter Rhaenyra more than anything. When the show picks up, she's his only living heir, so she's like daddy's little girl, basically. He's raised her in the ways of being queen, ruling the realm. He brought her to all of his small council meetings grew up, so she got like the world's best tutorial in how to be a good queen, ruling the realm. That's something he instills in Rhaenyra, his daughter, because Viserys is very protective of Rhaenyra and can see her potential to be a great ruler. 
So had things not gone sideways, she actually probably would have been a fairly decent queen compared to the reign of her other predecessors in the history of Westeros. But the whole thing with Rhaenyra's character is that even though her father, the king, brought her to all of his small council meetings and she learned all the things that you would need to learn as the next monarch, her mother, all the people around her, the other members of the small council, the other lords of the realm, kind of made her feel like she would never become queen, like it was never something that she would have to worry about. She always assumed growing up, like a lot of highborn ladies, that she'd be married off into some other powerful family, some other house around the realm to form some alliance. Like she'd be married into the Valerians, the Hightowers, the Starks, the Baratheons, the Martells, and at least when the show picks up, she'd always assume that her father would eventually have a male child and that male child would become the next king, so she wouldn't have to worry about being the next monarch. Or barring that, the line of succession would pass to her uncle Viserys Targaryen's younger brother, Daemon Targaryen. So she never actually thought that becoming queen was actually something that might happen to her. Even though on the side, and you kind of get this vibe from her character in the trailers, she never wanted to do the things that people expected her to do as a regular highborn lady. That's why during a lot of the trailer footage, she's like, Father, we have dragon riders. You have dragons. Let's go take care of all these problems. She's got a little bit of that Arya type of energy in her. Like, Arya never wanted to be a typical highborn lady. Like, that's not me. Like, she didn't want to get married to Gendry and go live in Storm's End. It's really not until Viserys, her father, names her his official successor that things kind of click in her brain. Like, oh, wait, I could actually be queen. I could call the shots. I could do what I want to do. I don't have to be a normal highborn lady. And once she is named the heir, she does very much want to be queen and be a good queen. Like, she doesn't just want power for power's sake. Like, she actually wants to do a good job. And at least at the time that it happens, all the other lords seem copacetic about it when they swear their fealty to her in front of King Viserys. Within the Targaryen family, though, Daemon Targaryen, Matt Smith's character, has always been something of a black sheep growing up. He's a great fighter, not the best fighter in Westeros, but one of the best. He's very headstrong, cocksure in a number of different ways. Most people actually view him as being pretty ruthless, striking fear in a lot of the other lords in the small council too. Like, people are kind of afraid that he might become someone like Megor the Cruel. But he also cares about the realm, genuinely. Like, during all the trailers, you see him talking about how he's going to restore the Targaryen family greatness. He's going to make people fear them the way that they used to, quote-unquote. So he has no problem making hard choices, but also a lot of people in Westeros, especially very powerful people like the small council, the other great lords, are kind of afraid of what he might do as potential king. He's a sort of reluctant one. I think he's interested in chaos. I think he survives in chaos quite well. It's not as though he wants to be king of a land or any of that. I think he's just pretending and trying to make everyone angry. So everyone kind of hates him, even though he's loyal to his family. And he has this very hard line, like he has this very clear idea of the way he wants things to operate in Westeros. And he really cares about everyone, including the common people who are doing things his way and hates people who do not. Which is why opinions on him amongst the realm, amongst the other great lords, the small council, are at both ends of the spectrum. Like people either really hate him or they really love him. Within their nuclear family, though, like within the royal family, he cares mostly about Rhaenyra. There is this weird energy between them, this chemistry, but at least when the show begins, she's so young. It's not like a outright flirtation or anything like that. It's just a little bit of chaotic energy between the two of them. They don't start out right away being like Jamie and Cersei. But like later in the trailers, when both of them are much, much older, you do see them getting married to each other. So like eventually, like much later in the timeline, things do get to that place. The other really big new character that they've only shown you a little bit in the trailers is Maseria. She's kind of like a little finger in a Varys character rolled into one. She starts out being Daemon Targaryen's mistress, but she's really cunning, very intelligent, like both Littlefinger and Varys. She eventually rises to become Rhaenyra's mistress of whispers, which is why I make the Varys comparison. She's not nearly as chaotic as Littlefinger. I only make the Littlefinger comparison just because of the stuff that he got into. He's a master planner like Varys, and they both have this long history of brothels, so you make all the jokes you want about that. But you can kind of see from a lot of the trailer footage and the actress talking about the character that she seems a little bit more sensible like Varys. Like, even though Varys got up to a lot of really shady stuff, Littlefinger was just completely off the deep end by the end. So she's not nearly as bad as Littlefinger. She genuinely cares about Daemon Targaryen and wants to help him. The other obvious comparison to make for her character would be to Melisandre because she's sleeping with Daemon in the same way that Melisandre was sleeping with Stannis. The only difference here is that Missaria isn't a magic user like Melisandre was and isn't a follower of the Red God. So there's not quite as much mystical stuff going on with her character as was going on with Melisandre. Since episode one is so close, I'll probably do like one more bonus video before episode one drops. And then after it does, I'll do a bunch of bonus videos just based on the biggest questions that people have or characters that you really want to hear about. 
Make sure you enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss any of the videos. Everyone click here for my House of the Dragon episode 1 review video and click here for my brand new She-Hulk trailer video. She-Hulk episodes also starting this week. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.